Why do you think that uneducated white women voted against their reproductive health freedoms? This is an indication that the legacy media haven't understood some of the changes that have just taken place. Here's Joy Reid saying that Kamala ran a perfect and flawless campaign because of celebrity endorsements. Is this the end of the celebrity endorsement or at least the type of celebrity endorsement that we had grown accustomed to? Think of like 10 years ago. Would it have been or 15 or whatever? Pick a number. Would it have been possible for all of the world's greatest stars to line up on a red carpet of endorsement and be rejected. What does it tell us about our changing trust in celebrity and in the landscape of celebrity and the way that power and soft power work? What does it tell us about the mistrust we have since the Epstein list and the Epstein scandal and the revelations about Diddy and that kind of subterranean alleged network of sex parties that apparently involves big stars and big political figures? Have we lost our faith and trust in celebrity? Now, as someone who's been inside those institutions, as it were, I now recognize that they've probably always been propaganda. I mean, you look at, so I read them books like Hollywood Babylon, and you sort of read that it's always been kind of built on sort of sex and intrigue. And it looks like now, in this new communication age, they're having to over undergo a sort of a massive rebrand and reframing. It's not that great films don't still come out of Hollywood. Like probably this year, there'll be things that get made that you're sort of going to want to watch. But the idea that stars and celebrities now are good for anything other than, you know, sort of make some films or whatever. I'm talking about probably a Ricky Gervais take on celebrity. You know, when you see Ricky hosting the Golden Globes, he's like, get your statue, thank your agent, and you're gone. Fuck. Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and fuck off, okay? <laughs> Maybe Ricky Gervais kind of preempted the kind of mistrust that many people were feeling for celebrity, probably because we've grown tired of their endorsements. I recognize I'm from that world a bit, you know, like I've been in movies and I'm a stand up comedian and all that kind of thing. But what I'm saying is, that there are sets of values transcendent of those values. And if you don't have access to them, then you will find a hard ceiling because celebrity is not God. Government is not God. And now we know that people are not going to treat it like one. Let's have a look at Joy Reid saying that Kamala's campaign was flawless. And I think it's important to say that, you know, anyone who has experienced or been in the United States for any period of time and experienced this country's history and knows it cannot have believed that it would be easy to elect a woman president, let alone a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Let's just be clear. Mm -hmm. And nothing that was true yesterday about how flawlessly this campaign was run is not true now. I mean, this really was an historic, flawlessly run campaign. She had, Queen Latifah never endorses anyone. She came out and endorsed, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, she had every... That's pretty amazing. It's a bit like the Chappelle joke, no? Like, uh, when uh, we're going live now for 9-11 reactions, we've got Ja Rule on the line. Ja Rule, I'm gonna need more than Ja Rule. Like, because we've been, now conditioned to living in a perpetual state of crisis. If Trump wins, he's Hitler. You've got, there's a pandemic. Get in your house, take your medicine. Like suddenly, Jar Rule or George Clooney or any celebrity, really. I'm not even excluding celebrities. Who cares anymore? Who actually cares about anything other than sets of principles and virtues that are derived from something a little more... Uh, esoteric and a little more valuable than the pursuit of box office or the selling of records or the selling of products. We're going to need a little more now, I feel. Prominent celebrity voice. She had the she had the uh, the Taylor Swift. She had the Swifties. She had the Beehive. Like you could not have run a better campaign in that short period of time. And I think that's still true. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I think there's a further indication of the misunderstanding of what's happening. See, when you look at legacy media, you can see there's an ongoing misdiagnosis here. Like now, this is uh, The View. Well, so many people are excited when they, did you see how many people posted about, oh, I've got to watch The View. The View became appointment viewing, didn't it? For like 24 hours because people were anticipating some strong reactions. Let's have a look at Sonny Hostin saying that uh, uneducated white women and Latino men uh, are too stupid to, so I, I think maybe she's suggesting they shouldn't be allowed to vote. Well, I want to dig further into, into the demographics because uh, black women tried to save this country again last night. 92% of black women voted for uh, the vice president. You have Latinas in the 70 percentile 
voting for the vice president. What we did not have is white women who voted about 52 percent, right, uh, for Donald Trump, uneducated white women, is my understanding. You uneducated white woman. <laughs> you can't carve the world up like that. I suppose you can because you can look at data sets. But there are other criteria to people. You could look at, you know, like I suppose from a psychoanalytical point of view, you could look at whether or not they're sort of aggressive or you could look up sort of whether or not they feel like they've been mistreated or abused or exploited. Or you could look at what they feel about the institutions of power and government, whether they're cynical and sceptical people. Maybe we don't carve people up like that no more. I mean, wasn't that part of the civil rights movement to get beyond that? I know it's a bit of a hacky argument in a way to suggest that we should try to fulfill the visions of great men like Martin Luther King, who said we had to start looking beyond those superficial taxonomies. And he, of course, was a Christian minister, so he had available to him a Christian purview, i.e. we are part of one human family. We must respect and love people. Apartheid and exploitation are anathema and are against our nature. The legacy media of course, in a sense, while claiming to be pursuing his legacy, inverting it by looking at everything in blunt demographic terms, seeking, I believe, to stoke division in order to facilitate further power of corporatist globalists. And now that that's not worked, they're lamenting and damning people that didn't vote the way they were told to. You know, voting the way that you're told to is not democratic. That's I don't know what it is, but it's not democratic. You have Latino men actually voting more for him. And you have um, and black men was not the story. We're not the story here because yeah. they voted almost 80 percent for the vice president. Right. So why do you think that uneducated white women voted against their reproductive health freedoms? And why do you think Latino men uh, voted in favor of someone that's going to deport, says he's going to deport the majority white, of his community? Women. That's interesting analysis, I think, perhaps because what are like landmark ideas that we can use to track this? The pandemic is helpful because the pandemic shows us how a government is tending towards authoritarianism whenever it gets the opportunity. Its relationship with big business, and business doesn't even seem like the correct word anymore, giant corporate monoliths that stand astride the globe is a great indicator of why people might become disillusioned. I don't think people are voting against like other people's sexual freedom or reproductive freedom. I know that the subject of abortion provokes very strong emotions. It's surely in anybody because it's a sort of a really painful and difficult thing. I don't think that that's what's defining this election. I feel like people don't trust the government, don't trust the media, don't trust the judiciary and don't trust Hollywood and don't trust entertainment. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in Phoenix, believe that we are endowed by our creator to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness from the Constitution. A Christian university, eh? GCU believe in equal opportunities and equip everyone to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing, creating, as they believe, a ripple effect of transformation. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, a master's or a doctoral degree, GCU's online and on-campus learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique goals. Why don't you learn a bit more? With over 340 academic programs as of March 2020, 24, GCU provide you with a path to fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Wow. It's a pretty profound goal, isn't it? Because everything we do is about self and this is about service. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable education. Visit gcu.edu forward slash Russell. That's visit gcu.edu forward slash Russell. Two S's, two L's. Give it a try. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.